as a quarter across the ring and fighting out of the blue. All right, thanks, guys. And Friday Night Fights presented by Budweiser. We're looking forward to tonight's card as well. Our first bout, Diego Corrales and Hector Arroyo in a 10-round junior lightweight bout. And there is Hector Arroyo, 32 years of age. He represented Puerto Rico in the 1988 Seoul Olympic Games. He's 18-5-2 with 11 knockouts. Took the bout on 10 days' notice. The man he's going against tonight, 21 years of age, fighting out of Sacramento, California, He's Diego Corrales. He is 24-0 with 20 knockouts. He's ranked number eight by the IBF, and this one should be a dandy tonight. Let's take a look at the rules as governed by the state of Nevada for all the bouts that we will see this evening here on Friday Night Fights on the news. Three knockdown rule is in effect. No standing eight count. Fighter may be saved by the bell only in the final round. Only the referee can stop the bout. Accidental cuts, they'll go to the scorecards after three rounds are complete. Diego Corrales was born in South Carolina, now fights out of Sacramento, California. In 1998 alone, he is 5-0 with four knockouts, coming off a September sixth-round knockout against Benito Rodriguez. And, Bob, the, the line on Corrales is he's, you look at him, you see how tall he is. He's supposed to be a young version of a young Tommy Hearns, only at a lighter weight. Tremendous punching power. Take a look at the knockout ratio for these two. And Diego Corrales with 20 knockouts in his 24. That's 83%. 17 of the 20 have come within the first four rounds. Arroyo with six first-round knockouts. He has been knocked out twice, once by Floyd Mayweather Jr. and once by Manuel Gomez, a boxer we saw last week here on Friday Night Fights. Corrales, of course, undefeated. Tremendous prospect. Real good punching power sort of in the tradition of those tall, lanky, string bean type great punches we've had. Alexis Orguello, great punching lightweight champion. Carlos Zarate, great punching bantamweight champion. Bob Forster, great punching light heavyweight champion. Tall, thin guys get a lot of leverage in their punches. Counter left hand by Arroyo. See some empty seats, of course. We are in Las Vegas, and this fight starting at five minutes after five local time so people just getting out of work on a Friday making their way in but expect a good oh, crowd oh, to see oh, Stevie Johnson watch ahead. Royal a tough journeyman type guy took this as you said at the top 10 day notice doesn't matter a lot for a guy like that he's always in the gym doesn't have a great record 18 5 and 2 so he has to be ready to take fights on quick notice Arroyo's been able to score with a counter left here in round one. There's a right hand as well. Arroyo, he'll just come right at you. I mean, he took the fight to Floyd Mayweather Jr. in January of this year. He was knocked out in the fifth round, but Corrales very concerned about Arroyo and Arroyo's ability to just keep charging in. The trick here is if he can charge him without getting caught and get inside and be able to get past the long reach of Corrales, he can make it interesting then because he's a rugged guy. He can do things on the inside. He doesn't want to be on the outside. I have to say, Corrales has shown me the ability for a tall guy, which is important if you're going to win a world title, to be able to fight on the inside. Adjust his punches. Riddick Bowe won the world title from Evander Holyfield that way. He was able to punch on the inside with Holyfield the first time. Surprise Holyfield. A double left hand from Corrales after he landed a short right inside. So far, Corrales is not doing what we like to see tall guys do. He's not fighting tall. Oh. And down goes Arroyo here near the end of round number one. You can only be saved by the bell in the final round. Mitch Halpern with the count. Arroyo's up. He says he's okay. Look at me. Look at me. Come to me. You okay? Yeah. Good right up a cut. Go. There's the bell to end round number one. So Arroyo goes down in the first round of this bout. Don't forget tonight's main event. We have the former world champion, Stevie Little But Bad Johnston, squaring off against Demetrio Sabalos. Johnston is 24 and 1 with 13 knockouts. Sabalos 20 and 2 with 13 knockouts. That is tonight's main event. Bob Hoppe along with Teddy Atlas. You know, Teddy, at first blush, these two men are very different. Johnston is from the United States. His opponent tonight, born in Panama, fighting out of California, but uh, maybe not so different after all. 
No, and another difference is once a southpaw, once an orthodox fighter. But once you get past that, a lot of similarities. Both guys lost in their lives, last fights, in title fights. Only difference is Johnson was defending his title, and of course, Sabalos was trying to win a title. But the most important thing for our audience, the greatest similarity, they both come at you like trains on a track. These guys don't know how to back up. Should made for a terrific fight. All right, talking about guys going at each other, let's take a look at Diego Corrales knocking down Hector Arroyo near the end of round number one in an uppercut scored right on the chin. Yeah, you know, we were talking about that earlier. A tall guy to win a world title, to get really to the top, he has to be able to do more than just fight on the outside. You want to see him fight on the outside, that should be his forte. But he's got to be able to throw short punches inside. Otherwise, the shorter guys will smother him. Corrales showed me that ability with that knockdown with the right uppercut. Again, as I said earlier, Riddick Bowe was able to win a world title because a tall guy, as he was, was able to adjust and throw short punches inside with the shorter Hollyfield, who thought he was going to smother him. Take a look at some punch numbers in round number one. And Corrales busier and a lot more accurate. 64% to 25, and of course he scored the knockdown late in the round. Corrales started boxing at the age of eight. He was suspended from school so often that his dad, Ray Woods, took him to the gym. And he immediately got involved in the amateur game and had some success, won a bronze medal at the Pan American Games in 1995. He has some other passions as well, does Corrales. He spent two and a half years at a culinary school, Leader Wolf Culinary Academy. He thought that he'd meet girls by going to culinary school. Instead, he became a pretty good cook. He said, I got there, and there were all guys there. Well, here's where, this is where Royal wants to be, on the inside. Even though he got dropped the last time there, he can't survive on the outside, that's for sure. It's the lesser of two evils at this point. Game guy or royal, real journeyman type guy. Ready to go in the second round, Corrales totally in control. There was concern on uh, Corrales' side, people's side, that a royal could be dirty sometimes in fights. So far, nothing like that has presented itself. Morales, one of these unknown quantities in boxing. Sterling record of 24-0 with 20 knockouts has not been in against major competition. The interesting thing to me so far is he does, has not done most of his big work on the outside, which you would expect. That knockdown was caused on the inside. He's done a lot of good work like here. Uses that right hand like some people use a left hand. Doubles it up. Well, again, Diego Corrales controlling Hector Arroyo as round number two comes to an end. Las Vegas for Arroyo. Arroyo knocked down near the end of round number one. And so far, Corrales has really controlled this bout. Teddy, what about some of the comments made in the Corrales corner in between rounds? Well, he's got a good corner. He has Kenny Adams there, ex-Army guy, worked with the Army team, worked with many world champions, works with a lot of top-ranked fighters. And um, he's getting a good, a good advice from a real seasoned guy like that, wants to use his height. Take a look at some punch numbers through the first two rounds of the bout. Corrales dominating this fight. Of the 112 punches landed, 107 of his power shots. So Corrales not really using his height and using the jab tape. And I would think maybe that's something that he eventually will have to work on against better competition. Exactly, against better competition. That's the key word. He's going to go all the way to the top. He's going to have to be able to impose his strong points, which part of it will be size be able to take advantage of those physical advantages of being tall, lanky, stringy. Be able to catch guys before they can get into their punching range. Right here, he's pot-shotting. 
He's having fun in here. You can see it. He's relaxed now. It looks like he's just picking the spots. Well, it looks like he does have a recipe for success. And I asked him how he got involved in the whole cooking thing. He said both of my parents work. And to take care of my brothers, I decided, you know, cook them good meals. And now he specializes in swordfish and baked chicken. So he's going through some recipes for us yesterday. They sounded pretty good. And he says he can't wait until after the weigh-in when he can finally eat. Oh, he's throwing some combinations here. He got caught a left hook there. He stayed there a little too long. With experience, you got to learn how many punches you have time for. Do I have time for three? Do I have time only for two? If you stay there too long, you get nailed with the counter. Well, the young Corrales did not turn pro until March of 1996. And he's been a very busy man. In the world. He just went down on his knee there. Nothing happened there, but Arroyo was pushing back on the back of his neck. Rather than push against it, where he might create an opening for the other guy, he went down. Oh, good right hand to the ear by Corrales. He sees spots. You can see he has good vision in there, Bob. He sees nice spots. He's nice and calm. And when he does see them, he takes advantage with combinations, not one punch. Good thing to see in a guy coming up at break, this stage. Break, break, don't punch. Get back. Turned pro when he was 18 years old. He's only 21 now. Nice and calm, nice and let relaxed. Him up, let him up. Don't put, let him Teddy, up. it's six Stop foot. That. Corrales probably will grow out of this weight division, I would think, the, the junior lightweight. Yeah, definitely. At 21, I would think that he's still going to mature a little bit. You know, you usually stop growing somewhere around 21 somewhere in that area, but you start to fill out a little bit at that time. Uh, there's the bell to end round number three and continued dominance by Diego Corrales. There's Hector Arroyo. You know, some people have said that his style of boxing is a bit on the dirty side. In fact, in his last fight, August the 22nd in Florida, seventh round knockout against Luis Lizarraga, and you see Arroyo using the lead headbutt. Yesterday I sat down and I asked him about the fact that people think he's dirty. I don't know where people get that idea from. Uh, you know, I, I, I've always been a, a fair sportsman, and my record speaks for itself. I have, you know, I haven't even been disqualified once in my career. I'm, I'm, I'm normally a pretty calm guy, and that's one thing that we were counting on is me keeping my composure because I am really calm. I don't let things bother me. I'm out there to do a job, and to achieve that, that to get that job done, you gotta. You know, keep your composure under any circumstances. So Arroyo is sort of denying the fact that uh, he might use some tactics outside of the rules. Like today, I guess when you're in that ring, which is 21 feet by 21 feet tonight, uh, you have to use everything you're in hand. Within the rules, Bob, within the rules. Of course, in the old days, we do a lot of the classic fights. In the old days, the old timers remember a guy named Fritzy Zivit. I mean, he was a master of the dirty tricks. One time of fight, he had a fight where they actually disqualified both fighters. It was so dirty. Now take a look at some power shots through the first three rounds, and you see Corrales. 102 more power punches landed through three rounds, and most of his punches have been power shots through this point in the fight. Remember, Arroyo was knocked down near the end of round one, and he eats another shot there. Took it well, it wasn't on the chin. That's the key, but he came back with a right hand on the chin there. Delivered it to Corrales' chin. You saw in the interview that Corrales had his eyebrow pierced, and he had two earrings in each ear, and he has an earring in his tongue. I said, aren't you concerned as a boxer to have your body pierced like that, that, you know, you could get cut and maybe it would lead to bleeding easier? So when you get pierced uh, after a certain amount of time, the cartilage hardens and extra cartilage grows, and it isn't a factor. Teddy scorecard after three rounds, and you see a 30 to 26 edge for Corrales, two point round in round one with the Royal going down. One thing Corrales, with the, when he steps up with the bigger class of fighters, he has to learn to keep that left hand up a little bit better, I would believe. A little undisciplined with his hand placement. And if you get caught, you're going to get caught clean instead of on the glove. And the back of his trunks says Joel. That's his two year old son, Joel Ray Corrales. When he fights the better fighters, when he fights the guys that are not afraid, have the confidence, not that the Royals are afraid, but that have the confidence to step in and throw that right hand, he can get caught with the right hand because his left hand is down a little bit. A 
lot of times now coming up with the kind of guys he's fought, Arroyo probably be one of the better guys that he's fought so far. Because a lot of these guys intimidated with the tall corrals, the good punching corrals. They're afraid to step in and throw that punch. And therefore, you can make a mistake and still get away with it because it's not going to be tested. Keep it up in there! Doesn't mean that it's right. Doesn't mean you shouldn't correct it. Don't wait until you're in trouble to correct it. Good body shot there by Corrales. Good uppercut to the body. The right punch to the throw, too, when the guy's leaning on it. But you have leverage, you have room for it. Getting tees off with that left hand. Nice body work. Real good body work. And again, the right choice of punch. You gotta know what punch to throw in what position. When a guy's close to you, there's not room to throw a lot of punches. There's room to throw an uppercut. As we come to the end of round number four in a scheduled 10-round bout, 21-year-old Diego Corrales continues his domination of Hector Arroyo. Uh, Hector Arroyo, Teddy, doing a little holding here at the end of the round. Yeah, a little bit, but they just got tangled up there a little bit. You can't blame anybody for any real dirty stuff in that. Been no headbutts. Everything's been clean. It's been on the up and up. It was Arroyo being knocked down in the final seconds of round number one, and Diego Corrales has dominated this bout. You were talking earlier, Bob, just before the end of that round. Oh, Whoa, Arroyo staggered again. Combination punching, not one at a time. Oh, Arroyo hurt. Really hurt. He's only been knocked out twice in his career. The bad news here is there's a lot of time left, and he doesn't look like he's going to be able to get through. Too much time left. Well, he's doing the wise thing there, holding on. What Corrales wants to do when he does that is throw a punch when the guy falls in like an uppercut. Uh, Mitch Halpern steps in and stops it, and not a bad decision, even though Arroyo is arguing. He was rocking back against the rope, Teddy. No, no doubt about it. It might be fortunate if you can see the camera in a second. They're attending to the cut over the right eye of Corrales. At the end of the last night, he got a little cut over that right eye. You were talking about having the uh, things uh, punctured in the eyes and everything, the earring. It's on the other side of the earring. All right. He got a little cut there, so he's glad he doesn't have to be in there any longer where the cut could get worse. Good right hand, right to the jaw, so the knock him back. Oh, yeah, and it started with the left hook, Bob, and he threw two. Instead of throwing one, he threw two. Why hit a guy with one so you can hit him with two? Well, 21-year-old Diego Corrales improves to 25-0. and He gets his 21st knockout, and he stops tough guy Hector Arroyo in round number five. And Teddy... I mean, he dominated this fight from start to finish. He wasn't tested, let's be honest here. He wasn't tested. He has not been tested in his 25 fights yet. Shows ability, but he's going to have to tighten up in a certain, couple of certain areas. Going to have to keep those hands up a little bit better. He's going to fight the big boys later on. Definitely has a lot of talent, though. And he's nice and relaxed in that ring. Let's take a look at some final punch numbers through this bout. If you take a look at it, look at that. I mean, 202 landed to 51, 63%. Most of those power shots and sheer domination by Diego Chico Corrales. For the official time of the stoppage, here's Jake Gutierrez. <laughs> Corrales stops Hector Arroyo at 101 of round number five. Don't forget our main event tonight, Stevie Johnson against Demetrio Savalas.